our voting rights are under attack. And when our voting rights are under attack, what do we do? saying, and I've been saying it for years, and it is local government is the front line of democracy. And do you know why? It's because this is where transparency happens at the ballot box. It's your local government that conducts your local elections to make sure the people that you want in office get elected. Local government is the front line of democracy, and we're going to make sure that it continues going forward that way. But we need your help, and I am so glad you are out here sharing your voices and making sure that our future elections are fair, open, honest, easy, and accessible. So thank you for coming today. 50 years ago, the voting age was lowered to 18 through the 26th Amendment, which, in fact, was passed faster than any previous amendment because of the advocacy of young people. As a 17-year-old right now, I know that I can register to vote in September. But what I don't know is that I'll be easily able to vote in my college campus next year out of state. If my college campus will have a voting site, if I'll be able to use my student ID as a valid voter ID, if I'll be able to establish in-state residency for voter registration. Hey, Sherry, I have a few questions. Why a rally for S1? With enough noise from rallies like ours around the country, we'll be telling Chuck Schumer to bring it up again next week, make it their top priority, reform the filibuster, and get it done. 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 We in the official Democratic Black Caucus of Macomb County, along with many communities of color, know that those who want to suppress voting are targeting us and our communities. You must remember that this is, will not only impact our communities, but everyone in our country. It's important to know that change is not something that those who have been in control since the founding of this nation want to see happen or to share power with those of us that are different. Why do you think it took until August 18, 1920 for women to be able to vote or until 1965 so that black people could vote without being suppressed by state laws? We are doing our part. Now it's time for the U.S. Senate including Senator Stabenow and Peters to do right for us and do whatever it takes to get the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Amendment Act passed, including the elimination of the filibuster. Thank you so much, Indivisible, and thank you to everybody who came out here tonight to rally in support of ensuring and in securing every American's fundamental freedom to vote. Thank you all so much for being here today. That freedom, the freedom to vote, is what our country is founded on, and it is what makes our democracy strong. This is not about Republicans versus Democrats. This is about Republicans versus democracy. At the end of this week, the US Senate will be back in session. And <clears throat> it's not an exaggeration to say that the fate of democracy is in their hands. Decisions will have to be made on how to proceed with a vote on S1 for the people and what will be done to address the filibuster. We're here tonight because we know there is a deadline for democracy and the Senate needs to do whatever it takes to get the job done, even if it means changing the filibuster. It's a shame that we have to be here for this, but I'm glad to see you all here for this. It is so important that your voices are heard, not just today, but as we go back into session and even beyond that, everybody's voice matters. Everybody's vote matters. I appreciate you being out here today and just know that the Senator hears you loud and clear. Thank you all so much. Let's hear it for all these groups, especially the Fighting Ninth Indivisible and SWIM. Like statewide indivisible, love it. But I have a little problem. Like over in my side of the Capitol, I have what, 147, I think, colleagues who walk back into our sacred chamber 
crunching on bro broken glass, walking by freshly swabbed up blood at the last second on the night of January 6th, after a violent mob overran our capital and tried to end our 230 some year experiment with self government we have going here in America. And they sat down and they voted to nullify the votes of millions of their fellow Americans. One person. One vote. One African American. One vote. One Asian American. One vote. One Latinx person. One vote. One Native American person. One vote. One gay man. One vote. One lesbian. One vote. One trans person. One vote. One everything else. One vote. One whoever I want to be. One vote. Let's protect our democracy. Thank you very much. I probably don't need to remind you, but we were barely done celebrating a successful, secure, and accurate election where more voters turned out than ever before, and then Michigan Senate Republicans started attacking our voting rights. Unfortunately for them, Progress Michigan is working with partners, just like Indivisibles, all across the state to oppose these bad bills. This is not a drill. We must stand up for democracy stand up for each other and stand up for America, for the people, not later, not tomorrow, not just in the next election. We need to stand up right now. This is the deadline for democracy. Thank you. Voter suppression is happening right now. Concerns about security and fraud have been exaggerated in order to impose unnecessary restrictions that disproportionately impact black voters, low-income voters, elderly voters, new voters, young voters, people with disabilities, returning citizens, and other oppressed people. The very foundation of freedom and equality are under attack. Strict voter ID laws have replaced poll taxes. Unreasonable burdens to registration and purging voter rolls have replaced literacy tests. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 has been eviscerated. We're here today to talk about a number of things. Obviously, uh, the For the People Act is before Congress right now, and I don't have to remind anyone here how important uh, voting is and how important our access to voting is. And I, I always try to remind folks whenever I'm before a group of people to think about the people who don't have access to this space to think about the people that don't have transportation here, don't have child care here. They have barriers to being here, let alone to voting, and they're relying on all of us, all of you. I need you to go to michiganunited.org to connect to the work that we're doing. We have phone bank shifts that are open. We have people waiting to hear from you, and we have millions of voters relying on all of you, all of you to show up for them, to show up for them. So will you join me? Yes. Are we going to do this? Yes. Whose vote is it? Our vote. That's all I got to say. <laughs> America, I would argue, didn't truly become a democracy until the Voting Rights Act was passed. Um, we did not have full access. You could argue we currently don't have access to full franchise. And there are people out there that are trying to limit the access to the full franchise. But the Voting Rights Act was the single most significant piece of legislation um, in the last 60 years. The reading of the Declaration of Independence, right? Governments are instituted among people deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Well, I don't know what consent of the governed is if it's not an election. Every significant step this country has taken towards justice, every time it's improved itself, has started not with powerful people signing documents, but with ordinary people organizing themselves and gathering and demanding a better world. And a, a small, desperate elite has opposed vociferously each and every one of those movements. And, and so now, as the planet boils and as the fate of billions hangs in the balance, we need to start making some powerful people tremble again. you're here because democracy our country is too important to sit this fight out so thank you for being here
I believe voting should be accessible. Do you agree with that? Yes. Heck yes. And that's why you organized to pass Proposal 3 in 2018. Right? So what more could we want from our election? We have checks and balances, and we have a process for a free and fair election here in the state of Michigan. None of this turned up widespread fraud. And that's not just my analysis. That's the analysis from Senate, Michigan Senate Republicans that I serve with, who spent months investigating these claims and came out with a report last week to say that no, there's no widespread systemic fraud here in the state of Michigan. Tell our senators, thank you for supporting S1. But time is running out, and we need to get it done for the people. For the people. For the people. Let's take our message beyond the rally. Let's take it to your neighborhoods, to your family members. Call your senators and ask them to be as loud as we are. But most of all, let the world know this is what democracy looks like. Thanks, everyone. Be safe. This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like.